what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back hope you guys are here for the right reasons not the wrong reason but <laughs> welcome back to some more slam dunk reactions man as i said i'm going i'm not gonna be doing like super reactions because we're not in the middle of a game right now we're kind of doing some slice of live episodes i don't know when we're going to get the next match um if it happens during this reaction then i'll probably do more than two but if you see only two then you know the reason why okay so there's a couple of things i want to address before i jump into this um for record this weekend so i've went ahead and transformed an existing channel that i had before which was terabyte gaming into terabyte reacts and gaming okay you guys know the issues that i've been facing for the past couple of months um so i've decided to go ahead and try to see if i can transition over to the channel that's actually to a channel that's actually working um and see how that works out i'm still gonna have the main channel up it's not coming down but everything i post on the main channel which is terabyte reacts is also going to be posted on terabyte reacts okay and gaming so over on that channel if you see a video if you get a notification for slam dunk and it's only a link just click on the link and it will take you to this video okay so if you see a link over there and there's no video or it's like 10 seconds or something i might be doing that i'm not sure if i'm gonna post the same video over there you get what i'm saying but what i am asking you guys to do is that the link will be in the description of this video of the new channel go over there and subscribe so you know when i upload these videos because if you don't you're still not going to be getting notifications and you're not going to know when i upload slam dunk for the rest of the time that i'm doing slam dunk okay and make sure you turn on all notifications as well so i'm letting you guys know this okay so that you can understand that that's where reactions are going to be from now on also okay so it's gonna be on the main channel it's gonna be over there as well sometimes i might just post a 10 second video telling you go to the link in the description it's gonna take you to the video on the main channel okay just so that we can keep up the watch time and everything on the main channel okay so we still gonna do that because i don't know if youtube is gonna fix this situation or not if it eventually comes to the point where I'm doing better numbers on this new and improved channel, <laughs> which is the same basically terabyte reacts to or whatever the situation is. If it comes to the point, if in the future we I, I get to um, monetization and this channel is growing better, you get what I'm saying? Um, then I will definitely transition everything over, but I will still leave the main channel for all those reactions that I've done over there and stuff before because i'm not going to repost all of those reactions back on this channel if if it comes to a point where i have to i might just post one video saying if you want to see me react to this series the reactions are already on the main channel go watch those reactions over there i might just do that for every single series that i've finished already and just to let people know hey i have these reactions over there if it just so happens that terabyte reacts and gaming becomes the main channel after a while i don't know if that's going to happen i'm just testing things out i've already tested the notifications of the people that are subscribing over there right now we are had a, a, a little bit over 100 subscribers over there all of you guys that are die hard fans of terabyte reacts you are part of the terror squad you are in membership you're on pay patreon whatever the situation is go over to terabyte reacts and gaming link is in the description link it <laughs> okay it's in the description guys click on the link subscribe to the channel turn on the notifications because as i said everything that i post on the main channel is going to be posted on this channel going forward all right so let's jump into slam dunk i'm ready to go two more episodes at least today 80 i think 87 and 88 I, if i'm not mistaken but in any case shoku is going to nationals and we're ready for the smoke we're ready for the smoke also you guys have forgotten that you need to comment on the videos <laughs> okay you I, I i think you guys have forgotten that you can commit comment on these videos okay 
you can okay comment on the videos man not just about you know you're not getting a notification but comment on the videos tell me what you like about the series thus far interaction is always cool and especially that we're transitioning maybe to a new channel that stuff is going to be very important also to help the channel to get out there as much because it's basically at its beginning stage and stuff like that so in any case thank you guys so much i appreciate y'all let's jump into the reaction and i will see you guys right after for the review That is not a coach. <laughs> ah, please. You're talking all that shit. We almost beat you. <laughs> I can bet that it's on another level. You know what I'm saying? It must be. And he's still fat. <laughs> Who is he talking to? 
It's definitely not Akagi. Is this his wife? Oh, it's Rukawa. <laughs> Why does he look so regular? <laughs> I thought I would have never guessed that it was him. He's like, I want to be the star. You know what I'm saying? I've earned it. Moroboshi Nai Moroboshi Dai Dai Moroboshi Where's it? Oh, damn. Is that him? He got injured? What? Does Ruko want to leave? Or he wants to go there for the summer or something? What? So he wants to leave the team? So he wants to go there to um practice with the big dogs, okay. They can't stop that man. It's, it's White Shack. <laughs> this is White Shack, bro. <laughs> or Japanese Shack. Yeah. They definitely modeled this guy after Shaq. No doubt about it. Look at that. He's hanging on the rim and his feet is still hanging on the ground. How tall is this dude? Bruh. Six five, two hundred and twenty pounds. I guess that's kind of big for um I mean that's that's huge for high school though. If you're kind of reminds me of like Zion Williamson, nigga. Would you get off the rim? <laughs> 
Well, he's definitely got... He's a 6'5", so he's almost as tall as Akagi. So... And I think Akagi weighs more, too, if I remember the stats. No! Actually, Akagi weighs less. Akagi was in the 180s, I think. Yeah, Akagi was... Yeah. Okay. Oh, he came back? So, uh, unless they're showing what happened. Did they come back? <laughs> this man keeps hanging on the rim, bro. Oh, he fouled out. They couldn't come back. Okay, so so we got two guys that we got to watch out for at Nationals. And that's cool. That's cool. I'm pretty sure there are a lot more players that... I don't know. That that's a weird narrative. That that is a weird narr narrative for me. It's not even about he wants to he said he wants to go to America so that he can improve. He didn't say he wants to go there to stay. He said he wants to go there to improve. So I thought maybe you know take a little bit of time until you know until it's time for nationals. I mean I mean don't get me wrong. It is way more valuable to practice with your team. You get what I'm saying? But as an individual, if he wants to go there and spend like a, a week or two in a basketball camp, you know what I'm saying? In America would would probably make him come back better. You know what I'm saying? Um, But on uh, but from another perspective, too, it is kind of selfish. You know what Rukawa is suggesting himself to do. And I understand where the coach is coming from. But I don't like the narrative of him just telling him, oh, just try to be like how we have it on the screen right now. Just try to be number one in Japan um, for now. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think both of them have a point of where they want to be, but as an individual, sometimes it's kind of like, I can tell you this from, you know, my perspective and my experience when it comes on to, you know, my nephews and stuff like that when they wanted to play ball, right? The thing about it, like, sometimes parents do have to make that sacrifice because sometimes the basketball camp is not in your city. Sometimes the basketball camp is not, in your state you know what i'm saying i remember one time we had um my sister she had to send um you know our oldest son 
um, which he was like, I think he was like um, around 15 or 16 at the time, right? And he had to send, she had to send him all the way to, I, I don't even remember exactly where it was because we live in Florida and it was another state. I think it was in a state that he's never been before. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And it was crazy. It was crazy because, you know, this is the first time you would have been away from them. You know what I'm saying? But eventually they came up with a plan and one of them, you know, his mom and his dad had to make plans to go with him because, um, of course, he's 16 years old. You can't just, you know, send him, you know, not to say that you would be sending him with a bunch of strangers or anything like that. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's a matter of you know, making that sacrifice so you, so your kid can, you know, get the experiences that he needs because sometimes, as I said, the tournament is not in your city and sometimes the extra training that you're going to get playing against better people and expose yourself to other people and other kids that are not playing in Florida that have maybe a, they play in a tougher league or something like that. Um, and they're all high schoolers. So sometimes, you know, of course, the ball players' sons, you know, NBA players' sons, they're going to get a lot of the attention, just like how LeBron James' son gets a lot of attention. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to be more highlighted, and he's already projected to be number one in the country because he's, he's good. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, when it comes on to Bronny James, he's not at that level yet. He's good for where he's at. But he's not at that level like how some people are saying he's already a prodigy. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a bit of a stretch. And I think that comes from, you know, his father being so great that they've already put this mantle on him. You know what I'm saying? Of expecting him to be great, too. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying he's not good. He's great for where he's at. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm going to judge him as to say somebody that could possibly get drafted into the NBA um, straight out of high school, no. When LeBron was Bronny's age, bro, <laughs> bro, go back and watch those, those some of those LeBron games back when he was Bronny's age right now. You know what I'm saying? Like the stuff that LeBron was doing at Bronny's age, Bronny ain't on that level yet. So I can't. I can't really say that he's going to be uh, – because some people have it to say that he's going to be better than his dad, at least a better shooter. I'll give him that. He's a better shooter than LeBron. He's a better shooter than LeBron at his age. I'll give him that. But a greater player overall, I don't see that. <laughs> I don't see that. But um, I'm just saying, like, when it when it comes on to this, I think the coach should, to, should take a little bit back – I understand where he's coming from, though, because Ruko is one of the best players in the team. I don't, I, I don't know what the timeline is like. I don't know if they, he can actually go and come back in time for Nationals. I don't know what the timeline is like, you know, because I don't know how far. I think they said Nationals like three weeks away, if I don't remember, if I remember correctly, right? I think it's three weeks, right? Rukawa really wants to get better. He, he, the coach is right, though. He's not he's not there as in I don't see him as the top. Of, I don't see him at on no equal level as Sendo. I think Sendo is a better player, but it's not by much. You know what I'm saying? It's not by much. But Rukawa is definitely, I think he, he can get there with a lot more experience. We also got to understand, as I've said in previous videos, Sendo has a lot more experience. Sendo is a second year. Ruka was a first year in high school. So Sendo has that first year experience, that rookie experience already. As you can see, a lot of players in the NBA, their sophomore year in the NBA is always better than their first year in the NBA. Almost always better. Their sophomore year is always better. You know what I'm saying? Second year in the NBA, get the rookie jitters out the way. Look at players like John Morant. You know what I'm saying? Like John Morant. You know what I'm saying? Just, um, it, it, um, you know, they lost to the Jazz, but that's that's cool. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. Um, is that series over? I think that series is over, right? Um, you know, so, but let me say at the end of this video, um, 
you know, I'm a Lakers fan, I'm a LeBron fan, right? I did not expect the Lakers to win the championship this year because of everything that they've been through. That's not to say that I didn't believe that they could beat the Suns because I'm not going to sit here like a sore loser and say, I went into the playoffs hoping that they would get somewhere at least to the second round. But if they lost in the first round, you know what I'm saying? I would have been like, cool. You know what I'm saying? Because of the fact that we, this is the first time, this is the second time that LeBron has had a major injury. AD can't stay healthy for some reason. <laughs> I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, AD's got those injury bugs, man. That just, it's just like the way how I saw it, I was like, he's going to come back and he's going to get hurt again. And it's not that, you know, it's not a cop out in any way. It's just how I see how these how these players and how they get injured and the things that they get injured. Like, he was out for what, three months? I think he was out for three months before the playoffs. The Lakers got into rhythm after the All-Star break. They got into rhythm. And then everything just fell apart when, when LeBron and AD got injured. You know what I'm saying? When LeBron got injured, I was like, this season is not going to go well. You know what I'm saying? And because whenever he gets injured during the season and he has to spend a lot of time out, it's never an easy road back. You know what I'm saying? They drop all the way to the seventh seed. And I was like, this season is just would have been great to see them put on a show. But it's so obvious when you watch LeBron play in the in, in, in the in the six games that he that he played in the playoffs. You could obviously see that LeBron was not 100 percent. And a lot of people were saying, you know, oh, he's just passing around and depending on AD for the two the, the, the two games that, that they won. Um, I was feeling a little hopeful. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie because AD was on the floor and AD was kind of carrying the team. And I said, just watching the game and watching LeBron play, I was like, LeBron is not at 100%, bro. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Because LeBron is, Le, we should be blowing out the Suns. If LeBron is at 100%, we should be blowing out the Suns. That's why I know him coming off of this injury is just like, it's so obvious that his ankle was not at 100%. That burst that we saw when he was, you know what I'm saying, top of the MVP votes. When he was, he, he was, he was on a MVP level this season. Well, it, pretty much every season. But for this season, it looked like LeBron was going to win his fifth MB, MVP. Right? And then the injury happened. And then when he came back, and I'm watching him play, and I'm like, LeBron, yes, he can he can still jump and dunk, but you can see that the elevation is not there. You can just see, if you watch a player for years and you see how they can jump and stuff like that, and it's not because of age, because we all know age is not a thing that affects LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Injuries are the things that affect LeBron. And past three seasons, he's been, he's been injured twice during the regular season now and 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 he's been out for long longest of his career i think this time around i think this time around no actually the one that happened back in 2019 i think i think that was the one that was the longest one because he was out from like christmas day and he never came back to like i think uh, i think it was like march or april or some something like that and he tried to make the playoff push but he couldn't um lebron at 100 percent don't play like that and, and the thing about it is that you know and then the supporting cast you know what i'm saying i know i'm saying a lot here at the end of the episode we're gonna get to the next one but the the the, the cast <laughs> you know what i'm saying like the cast that was there was just like you know what I'm saying? How you going to have zero points in a playoff game? You a starter, bro. Like, come on, man. Like, that was crazy. I was watching those games, and I was like, yeah, you know, it's pretty much what I expected this year because, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, um, the thing, the thing that I want to happen this year, I don't know. I think the Nets might take it. But I think this upcoming series, the most interesting series that is going on, that is going to start right now, is Nets versus Bucks. I think the Bucks have a chance to knock off the Nets, but I think the Nets just have too much firepower. 
and I think they might I, I think they might come out of that series. But I'm hoping that the Bucks beat them because I think they're a new team. They're kind of like you know what I'm saying when they when when LeBron Wade and Bosch got together that first year, and everybody just expects so much from them. And they lost in the finals. And I think maybe that's what's going to happen. Um, another interesting series that is going on also is Clippers versus Mavericks. That's another series that that's going to a game seven. Um, I'm hope I'm I'm kind of hoping that the Clippers can pull it out. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I love me some some Luka Doncic, but um I think the Clippers should win this series. And the reason why I say that is because they fought themselves fought their way back into the series because we all thought it was over after two games because they were done they were down by two games after the first two and we all thought the series was over we thought Dallas Mavericks was probably going to win three um four one or win um in five but it didn't happen it didn't happen so now we are at three three going into game seven so I'm hoping that the Clippers um can take can take the series and I'm rooting for them I want to see Paul George win you know what I'm saying? Even though I don't believe in him as 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 a player that can really step up and and make big shots, um, you know what I'm saying? Like I just don't believe in Paul George that way. And I, and even though I I I still want to see him win because he's been trying to get over that hump for years now. So a lot of these older players like um, Chris Paul, I want to see him win this year too if he can. If he can get to the to the finals, that would be so cool to see Chris Paul get to the finals. But I don't think the Suns are going to get to the finals because I think there's it, it it um if the Clippers not the Clippers, if the Suns play the Magic, the Cl play the Magic. If the Suns play the Mavericks, right? If they play the Mavericks, I think that is going to be a all out shootout. There's no good. Nobody's gonna play defense in that series. It's basically gonna be Devin Booker versus Luka Doncic, right? But I think if the Suns play the Clippers, I think the Clippers will come out of that series. Um, I think that's who they play next. If I'm not mistaken, if they win against Dallas, I think that's who they play next. Um, no, no, are they? Yeah, I think I, I'm. I don't know how the brackets are set up right now. I'm just saying I don't I don't have that information in my head right now. Um, but yeah, man. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Um, anyways, guys, let's get to the next episode. I've spoken a lot on this. <laughs> no, you guys were saying, would you shut up and watch the show, man? All right. I got y'all. Ball. Like we watching a basketball anime. So basically, in an indirect way, he's trying to tell him, you can be, you have the talent to be number one in Japan. So aim for that. So that's cool. Rona, Riona. I don't know. Y'all lost one of y'all best players. Damn, that nigga grew. <laughs> Five nine. How tall is Ikuichi? Nah. <laughs> Kishimoto. Kishimoto. 
Real basketball. Damn, this man is just throwing rocks at this man's glass house. He don't care. <laughs> Why are they showing waves clashing against the rocks? Are they at the beach? <laughs> I thought it was going to be like a um, a Mike guy moment. <laughs> Springtime of youth. Oh, we got, we definitely want this team. I hope you guys are up first at Nationals. You, how you going, go disrespect Sando? Yeah, I get it. They didn't make it to Nationals, but you don't know what they, they paid two top schools. In my opinion, Shulk is a top school to me. They're not considered to be in like the top three schools, but to me, this is going to be our introduction. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Your team is trash, but you over here talking smack. <laughs> oh no! I can't believe they over here talking smack. Tikochi. And they they're trash. That was the worst spin move I've ever seen animated in sports. <laughs> that spin move don't even look real, bro. Suchi <laughs> Asuchi. His names be killing me sometimes. Because... I wonder Damn
So maybe this is the player he sent to the... Yeah, America is uh, is um <laughs> The what? The lax? <laughs> what the hell? The basketball in America is a whole different animal, my friend. It's a whole different animal. It's very few players can you know what I'm saying, come from overseas and actually be as good at like a Dirt Nowitzki or like our Lucha Luca is right now. It's not very very many Yao Ming. It's very very few. You could probably count on one hand the amount of players that came from Europe and was really good in the NBA or you know Asia. Jeremy Lin, he was like a a spurt of greatness, I guess. So he definitely has his reasons as to why he's giving Rukawa that advice there. So I totally understand it's from his perspective now. He's a man going to the NBA because he thought it was going to be easier. Can't disregard the the um the basics. Sometimes you do get too big for your britches sometimes, you know what I'm saying? He died? In New York.
I know you guys remember me saying in like some of the earlier episodes what I think of Rokawa that he's a uh, somewhat of a selfish player, but he's selfish for the right reasons. Um, so hopefully he doesn't that he understand that he has a team and in his own way he's grown a lot. So I don't want him to fall back into that nature. You know what I'm saying? Alright, so that was episode 88 of Slam Dunk. As I said, these are Slice of Life episodes. Um, so we're just going to do two at a time because, you know what I'm saying, like we're close to the end of the episode. I think it's 101 episodes. So we're close to the end. So we're probably not going to see much until the end. We maybe do one match. It's not like we're going to see like the national championship game during this series. It's just to the way how this anime has been going and how they do... Like, one basketball game could be, like, 10 episodes. I don't think there's going to be, you know, like, a full-on national championship arc before the end of the series. That would be ridiculous. So, um, so yeah, so we're just going to take our time and get to the end. No fuss, no fight. I might put out another couple of episodes before next weekend, so look out for that. Um, of course, guys, I appreciate you guys as always, man. I appreciate you guys. Let me go talk about this some more in the review. All right, so here we go. Today is a beautiful day. You know what I'm saying? Because two, epi two more episodes down, we're getting very close to the end of the series. So let me reiterate this before I go into my review. If you want to see notifications for slam dunk my terabyte reacts channel is broken which is my main channel the, the the notifications are broken on the channel i don't know if youtube is ever going to fix it so i've basically rebranded my terabyte gaming channel into terabyte reacts and gaming okay so there's not a lot of subscribers over there yet there's a little bit over 100 subscribers over there now the link is in the description guys go to the description and subscribe to the channel turn on the notifications because as i said now you can know when i upload the slam dunk reactions no matter what time it is because those notifications are working on that channel okay so go turn on the notifications over there and subscribe as well it doesn't cost you a damn thing so it's very easy to do okay so let's do it man when it comes on to you know these couple of episodes we got to see some other schools and what they're all about i'm curious to, to know who we're going to play first um at nationals there's 29 teams i think they said i think they said 29 teams that's a lot of teams you know what i'm saying so there's uh is a potential for a lot of matches um uh, is it one and done for the national championship like ncaa style let me know you know what i mean like is it going to be like that or is it going to be like you know best of three or i don't know what it's going to be i'm pretty sure they're going to say it at some point but i want to know now the, the format that's not spoiling anything for me so no big deal so yeah man so in these two episodes i think the second episode was you know what i'm saying like um i think maki it's very cool dude i like him because he i think he respects sakuragi to the point where we're inviting him you know go places with him whatever just so happen to see him and say i think maki respects him to the point where he's saying you know what sakuragi is going to be a great player in the future this is a guy that you know what i'm saying i respect his game we can have some tacos together you know what i'm saying like or some sushi whatever it is you know, you know um so in my opinion when it comes on to what they tried to portray in, in in episode 87 they did a pretty good job of doing that and to see these complete kind of opposites 
you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, kind of hang out together. That was pretty cool. They went went to a game, saw a good player. He came back. I think he was injured or something or exhausted, whatever the situation is. But he came back and tried to will his team back into the game. They came back down. I think they only lost by 12. They were down by by 30 at one point. So that would, that's really good for him to come back and do that. I mean, those two teams are going to be at Nationals anyways. They were just playing the final game. Um, but the, the team that they were playing with that big dude, yeah, I'm saying they definitely more than likely um, designed that character off of Shaq. It's the Japanese Shaq or White Shaq, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's what I got from that episode. Episode 88, however, kind of dig dug deeper in and, and give us a little bit more perspective on who Rukawa is. Rukawa is the type of person in life. Take away the sports for a second, because I think he can. Uh, I think anybody can apply this kind of mentality to have. He's the, he's the type of person that. You know what I'm saying? Like he wants it so bad. He wants to win so bad. And he also wants to improve his talents so bad that he's willing to 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 rush it. And a lot of a lot of times it's a it's a lesson that I take very seriously because a lot of times we get ourselves in these situations a lot of times where we um we think we're we're good and we know that we're not good enough and we're trying to improve, but we rush the process you get what i'm saying and i think that's what anzai is trying to to teach him is that don't rush the process you get what i'm saying because you might end up in a situation where now you are improving but at the same time other players that are way better than you you know what i'm saying america this country is a whole different beast when it comes on to basketball players even today if you look at the era before this one of basketball you know a lot of people like to say and i i a hundred percent disagree saying that the past era of basketball was tougher than this um era's basketball and it's not necessarily that's the case and i hate when they just cookie cut it like that and make it seem like that's what it is that's not what it is there are new rules in place to protect the players a lot better. Put that aside, right? That aside, let's talk about the game itself, right? Let's talk about the game itself and how it has changed. You have, back in the day, seven footers, seven players that are seven feet tall, they ain't shooting no threes. Okay, mid range. The, the the best you gonna get out of a seven footer is mid range, right? Nowadays, everybody shooting threes. Everybody shooting threes. It don't matter who you are. You sh they, they out here. Sh look at look at N Jokic, Nikola Lloyd, the plays for the Denver Nuggets. He's out here shooting threes like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? He's a seven footer. You know what I'm saying? So it don't mean nothing. The era of basketball has changed. And I think it changed. Players are better. And a lot of times people is like, oh, but they couldn't play in, 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 in old school basketball, man. They couldn't have played in the Jordan era. And what the hell is the Bulls going to do about Steph Curry? Hmm? Who on that team was what was going to guard Steph Curry. Steph Curry can pull up from anywhere in front of anybody. First of all, I believe the players are faster in this era. Players are faster because kids get into basketball a lot earlier now. More kids. You have more access to basketball now. You get what I'm saying? Like, you got all these little things, right? So, for me, when I, for me, the way how I look at it, and if you want to, you can look up um, a player that was in that played in the NBA called Gilbert Arenas. He explained this very thoroughly, and I completely agree with him when he talks about that this era of basketball is 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 you know people sleep on it. People say the players are soft, and I get that because the, you know what I'm saying. 
um you know these little tick attack fouls sometimes is just like you know the flop in and it's not that players never used to flop back in like the jordan era or magic era or whatever it's not that players never used to flop it's just that it it wasn't it never worked <laughs> you know what i'm saying like a lot of times you would see players you know what i'm saying like exaggerate how they got hit to get foul calls and that's fine you get what i'm saying you know because you know you're cheering for a team if another team is flopping of course you're gonna get mad about it because you're passionate about your team you know what i'm saying but in in my opinion just like how you know what i'm saying some things are just um unwritten rules you know what i'm saying unwritten rules in in, in every sports you know what i'm saying certain things are going to happen you can't control it. you can get mad about it if you're you, you know what i'm saying if you're cheering other cheering on it but if, when your team flops you're like why did i call it that foul right that <laughs> that's what you do that's what you do so it, it's just like sometimes you know in your mind you know you know what i'm saying that wasn't a foul but because you're cheering for the team you're like oh let's get these two bro you know what i'm saying <laughs> let's, let's get these two free throws you know what i'm saying because even though you know lebron flopped <laughs> you're like you're not you're gonna cap real hard for your team you know what i mean that's just how it is that's just passion right there <laughs> you know what i mean so when it comes on to this era of uh, of um basketball versus you know the last era which you know the J jordan and you know the, the magics you know kareem and all these players these great players larry bird you know what i'm saying clyde Drexler, patrick ewan all these great players that came out of that era you know charles barkley you know what i mean you look at it from this from a point from the, the the point of you know what i'm saying yes the nba was tough was physically tougher let's let's just call it that and i like when people being specific but when you're talking about the technical parts of the game shooting the shooting in this era is better you have more players that can shoot jumpers and threes and you know you know you don't really have you know back in the day the mid-range dominated the game you know what i'm saying you had your jordans everybody was shooting jumpers mid-range you know what i'm saying you really didn't have players well you really didn't have a lot of players that dominated from beyond the three-point line you know what i'm saying you had great shooters from beyond the three-point line but you didn't you know what i'm saying these players weren't putting up 15 threes a game like steph curry and making 11 of them you know what i'm saying like consistently you know shooting 40 percent from three nobody back in the day was doing that i'm talking about year after year after year nobody was getting triple dub averaging a triple double every year like russell westbrook is doing right now and a lot of people might say that back in the back in the day it wouldn't have worked because players would have just swat you out the air out you know what i'm saying and stuff like that because it was a tough era and i do understand your perspective on that when it comes on you have to specify i would say last area was it was physically tougher but I, as i said it's not the nba players fault these rules were put in place for the refs to ref the game the way that it ref it today these rules were put in place to protect the players a lot better because you can't have a bunch of players just getting injured all the damn time you get what i'm saying even though they still do you get what i mean but you have if you compare the amount of players that used to get injured back in the day to now it's a lot less it's a lot less actually it's a lot less on average a lot less players get 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 um injured now than back then a lot of players used to get injured injured back then it was a tougher era people you know players would just get swatted out of the air bro hard hard fouls especially the playoffs jeez sheesh <laughs> it was it was it, it, it was a ufc match sometimes you know what i'm saying um and i think what kind of changed everything was you know what i'm saying even though it was not just happening on the court was you know what i'm saying malice in the palace you know the fight that broke out and went into the crowd and all kinds of stuff it was crazy you know what i'm saying look it up malice in the palace it's on youtube anyways guys that is all i have to say i think when it comes on to to Ruka, i think that's the wisest thing for him to do now that i understand where coach anzai is coming from i can definitely 100 percent agree with him that Ruka needs to sit tight get better be, become number one 
in Japan first, and then we can trans you can transition into that if you believe at that point that you're good enough to be in the NBA. Because as I said, the NBA is a different beast. You know what I'm saying? Um, so in any case, it, it is not. It's not for, 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 you know what I'm saying, if you pay in tiki-taki basketball when these guys, the technical skills that they have in the NBA is just, is no joke. And as I said, it's improved. It's improved over time. It is better today than ever. You know what I'm saying? When, I, when you're talking about the technical aspects of the game, the shooting, the, the footwork, everything has just improved. You've seen so much better stuff. It, it, it's, it, it's unreal. But anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As I said before, I'm reminding you again, link is in the description. Go subscribe to the new channel and turn on notifications over there because I might drop two more episodes this week and you're going to come in my comment section talking about, I didn't see this in the... I'm telling you how okay i'm telling you how you can get notifications for videos going forward go subscribe to the new channel okay and as i said i might i might not post this the reaction over there i might just post a video sending you a link back to this but at least you'll get a notification that's the whole thing i'm trying to solve here anyways thank you guys so much man i appreciate y'all Leave a like on the video as always, whether you're watching this on Terabyte Reacts or Terabyte Reacts and Gaming. Leave a like on the damn video, man. I, I tell you guys all the time, it doesn't cost you a damn thing. It doesn't cost you nothing. It costs you nothing. Okay? Nothing. It costs you nothing. Leave a like on the video. Leave a comment about what we learned in these two episodes if you agree with me if you disagree with me about some points i make whatever the situation is i appreciate y'all as always it's your boy terabyte reacts and i'm out peace